we have an incredibly special guest on Ticket to Anywhere podcast, Jeff Jenkins of Chubby Diaries. So Jeff helps chubby people travel the world through his online community, which is chubbydiaries.com. He blogs and he creates video content to empower people to travel at all stages of life and never to wait for that perfect moment. We have been waiting to speak with Jeff after seeing all his positivity he shares with the world. We're always looking to see what content he's putting out, whether it's his travel journey, fitness routines, food content. With his creative mind and busy schedule, he's made time to support social justice causes, especially as a founding member of the Black Travel Alliance. Hope you all enjoy this episode as much as we've enjoyed having him on the Ticket to Anywhere podcast. Hey there, it's Trizzy and Leah, your hosts for the Ticket to Anywhere podcast. We created this travel podcast for you, who's just as obsessed with exploring the globe as we are. We each travel a different way and even have different work schedules, but every episode we aim to widen your worldview, inspire you to consider a destination near or far, or learn from others. With us, you can adventure from anywhere. Keep in touch with us on social media at Ticket to Anywhere Podcast on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and TikTok. Never miss an episode by subscribing to Ticket to Anywhere Podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and Pocket Casts. And hit subscribe to follow our visual podcasts on YouTube. Welcome, Ticket to Anywhere friends. We have Jeff from Chubby Diaries here. Jeff is an absolute ray of sunshine, absolute ray of sunshine. He's a content creator, um, a big member of the Black Travel Alliance and a blogger, creator of the community Chubby Diaries, you know, helping chubby people to travel the world, creating a more inclusive um, travel sphere for us all. So Jeff, I'd love to know how you came up the name, came up with your name and you know, how you got started. I literally like the whole like backstory of just like Chubby Diaries. We can probably dive into that later. But um, I remember I was like, okay, I know that I want to do like plus size uh, travel. And I was like, okay, what's another word that I can use instead of like plus size um, or big or anything like that. And so I was like chubby. I like chubby. And so it was like chubby, chubby. And I, re- I remember and that was the first time yesterday remembering like how I just like sat there and I think I was in like my dining room area and I was sitting in a chair and it was like I was having a conversation with myself, like by myself in my mind and like my my lips were moving uh, and I was like chubby, chubby. And I was like chubby and then I was like diaries, diaries just came out, right? And I was like, ooh, let's see if chubby diaries is taken on, on the internet. <laughs> and I was like, I like how this rolls off. Yes. Uh, the ten, and so um, I looked it up, and I saw that it was still available, and I was like, "I'm doing Chubby Diaries," and so that's what I went with was Chubby Diaries, and I love it. Nice. I Did it start it off as a travel focus? Yeah, it's still travel focus uh, all the way. I think y'all might see some food stuff in there, and I was because we had to pivot a little bit, but still, food and travel is yeah, or travel goes sense. together. They get together together. So 100%. I go to places to eat. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> I feel like the name, yeah, (laughs) I feel like the name Chubby Diaries has like a softer connotation to it, right? Rather, it it makes it more like warm and fuzzy. So that's why I really like it too. (laughs) For sure. Definitely. So do you focus on destinations? I know you said you had to pivot a little bit into food, but food and travel go hand in hand. But do you focus on destinations and places that say are like more inclusive or is your advice kind of like applicable anywhere? Like when you first started what was the focus? Well, yeah. So honestly, it was just travel. That was the focus. And it still is in a lot of ways. Um, But I'm given a different perspective. So I'm a fat black guy. And that was even how I found my niche was going from like my cousin made me fill out this like form. She's a PR rep. She made me fill out this form uh, about like finding your niche because everybody was over there saying like oh find a niche find a niche you should niche down and I was like I don't know how to do that <laughs> and so when she gave me when she gave me that I filled it out and I was like I don't have anything I don't see anything like I filled it out and I was like I don't think I still don't feel like I have my niche and she was like no it was right there like and it was like talking about what it it was like the question was like like who are you like what is you and so I was like yeah I'm a fat black guy that travels the world 
And I was like, yo, like that, I'm on to something here because I don't know anybody talking about being fat and being black, like at the same time, like, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> so I felt like that's what like got me into uh, like my perspective and like, it's easy to talk about my experiences. Like, mm-hmm. like just you being you, like you bring uh, like the way that you look at the world or the way that you look at travel is different from how other people look at it. And so that's why it's so easy for me to talk about it. And so I didn't even realize that other people were having the same issues when in the plus size community when it came down to travel. And I never thought about it as much. And a lot of times that's what I, that's what I consistently hear from different brands that I work with or that I do consulting for is that like, yo, I wasn't even thinking about plus size people uh, when it came down to the marketing and branding and, and things that we do in our advertisement and stuff. So uh, it's really cool that that's been my focus more so. But then I've been able to add um, like more inclusive places for plus size people like mm-hmm. to my content. Like, hey, you should visit here or here. Here are some tips as a plus size person when visiting X city or right. country. Mm-hmm. You right. have such a positive uh, vibe to yourself and how you put your content out and how you represent for yourself. And I feel like that's why you you didn't know what your niche was because you were so happy and content with who you are. But then when you, when your cousin really had to like dig deep into you to get get that niche out, you're just like, you know what? There's probably people out there that needs my positivity. So I'm going to speak out for them. And now look at it. Like we see a lot of ads. We see a lot of commercials. That's just showing, you know, plus size people. And it's a, it's lovely. You know, the world is changing. It's really dope. Mm-hmm. So we yeah, appreciate like you for that, man. Thank you. And I feel like I'm just a little section to the bigger movement that's happening. Because, I, I mean, I'll say this. I remember, and, and some people are hesitant, even when they, they hear that this is what I do. Uh, like, my motto is to, to live life now. And I remember one of my family members telling me, it was like, why don't you just teach people to, to, to lose weight? And then you don't have to, like, have this, right? Like, you don't have to have this platform. And I was like, you want to know something? There's so many other platforms out there that's telling people to lose weight, feel great. I was like, nah, I want to talk mm-hmm. to the person where they're at right now. Yes. Like, even if you're trying to get yes. to your like, your like, your ideal weight or your like goal weight, that could take you years from now, or you might mm-hmm. not ever get there. So mm-hmm. what do you do in that time until you get to whatever ideal weight that you want to get to? Uh, I was like, do you stop living? And so that's my thing. I want to yes. talk to the person right now. I want to get them to get out there and travel where they're at right now. And so that's, that's been my mission uh, more so Chubby Diaries to encourage and motivate people to get out there and travel the world. Oh, yes. Man. What a way to start off this morning. I know because <laughs> you can't, you can't wait to live your life as you say. So while yeah. you're on that journey to whatever body acceptance, weight loss, whatever you need to, you know, feel great about yourself. You could, you got to live your life and that's exactly what you're doing. Oh, I know. I feel like we just went to church. Me and Trisier are like, yes. Come on. Come on. I love it. I love it. I got more for you. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Oh man. Um, I have a more specific question then as you've been traveling and as, you know, a plus size traveler creating the Chubby Dyers community, would you recommend any like apps, gear or resources that have helped you or made your travels like easier? They don't have to be like, you know, plus size specific, but we, we'd love to know like what you use, what you favor. Um, <coughs> good question. Teva, I love their freaking shoes. Uh, <laughs> like, so like there's a lot of hiking that goes on or when you travel, there's a lot of walking that happens. And so man, using my, like the, the boots, like, man, mm-hmm. having a good pair of shoes is like the, the goat when it comes down to travel. Uh, so if you don't have a good pair of shoes, if you're trying to look all cute in your little sandals sometimes, that ain't, <laughs> the, man, that ain't the way to go. That is not the way to go. It ain't the way to go if you, like, tiny. Like, it's, it's not. It's just not. You get blisters and all that. So mm-hmm. I would say that Granite Gear is, is producing some... Uh, some backpacks now for hiking and, and like, if you want to do that. Uh, and the reason I mentioned a lot of outdoor stuff is because that's what I've been doing way more now because yeah. we're not able to travel internationally. I've been going to national parks 
And that is just like being in a whole nother world when you're in these national yes. parks. And so I love that a lot. Um, and I would say uh, apps wise, I would say all go, um, but they definitely have stopped for a little bit. So it is, it's, it's not much out there right now. And so, and I think that's because travel has definitely went down, but I definitely will be able to recommend more stuff later on in the future. Yeah. This is water. So <laughs> if it, it looks like I'm drinking beer. It's not uh, often, or the, the state of Texas had a crazy like crisis oh, with yeah. uh, mm-hmm. the snow and stuff like that. And so uh, my friend's parents had got a big shipment of Anheuser Busch water in a can. What? And so That's <laughs> so a good look. It was, once people had water back and stuff like that, there was yeah. just all these leftovers. So I'm not drinking beer. <laughs> at, 10 a.m. in the morning. We would, 8 you know, we would not have judged you if you were. Anyways, mm-hmm. I would be like, hey, yeah. <laughs> you know what? I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, when I'm on vacation, yeah. That, yeah. One time, you might wake up with a drink, you know. <laughs> but like, life with Chubby Diaries is a vacation, right? Oh my God, we oh, tell yeah. you, that's what it is. It's, it's so crazy. And somebody asked me. One of my good friends asked me. He was like, "Well, what's vacation like for you now?" And because it, it, like you just said, like life is like a vacation, like everywhere mm-hmm. I'm going, it feels like a vacation. I'm like living it up. And so I was like, yo, coming home and doing nothing is vacation to me now. And like hanging out with my friends and just chilling with them is more of a vacation now than it was in the past. And so yeah. it's, it's so crazy how it flip flop. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah, because when you're when you're out there creating content like you're work, you're working, you know, you go back Mm -hmm. to where you're staying and you got to you got to put some stuff together. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, I'm getting better at being able to delegate and also outsource a lot of my stuff so I can still enjoy the time that I have uh, because I'm I'm actually getting ready to go to Hawaii um, in like two weeks, 13 days. Okay. Now and I'm like super pumped up about that. Oh my gosh! Yeah. But I'm going with six of my be- or five of my best friends, <laughs> so it's 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 work. And then I also mm-hmm. have to be able to balance that and hang out with them. Mm-hmm. And I'm 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 hoping like literally like next week they like ease up some more mm-hmm. restrictions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, oh, just <laughs> no, seriously, this. which island are you going to? <laughs> Maui. Ooh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Have you Maui's been before, Maui. Jeff? To no, Hawaii? My first time. First time. Oh, you're going to love it. And, I, and I'm excited because um, I'm I'm going to do some stuff for like travel and leisure and then Ooh, also nice. with, the, with the tourism board for Hawaii. So that's going to be dope as well. And, oh, that's so good. Yes. Um, yeah. Sustainable, responsible tourism is there. Yes. MO right now. And I'm very happy about that. Yeah. Yes, yes. Absolutely. Preserve those beautiful oh, yeah. islands. <laughs> When did you get the travel bug? Like, is, has that always uh, Japan. been in Japan? Nah. <gasps> 15, 15 years ago in Japan. Wait, are you Japanese? No, I'm Chinese. Oh, you but... just got very excited. Yeah. Like, oh. <laughs> because <'cause> that was <laughs> like me too. Oh, oh, I feel like who doesn't get just excited about Japan? Like, Japan is the yeah. future. Oh, man. Oh, you Same know what? Place. Actually, yeah. when I say that, people be like, what? Japan? <laughs> really? Tell me more. Oh, yeah. yeah oh, yeah. yeah. That, that happens often um that's no literally it almost that your response was so different from anybody's <laughs> response and i was like wait are you from japan or something we're, like, we're very <laughs> relatable yeah. no. she, are you from, she reps her country hard <laughs> she wants reps the country that, that i'm not hey, from hey, yeah like, come on but no like straight up like I, I went when i was in college first time ever getting on an airplane mm-hmm. and i i was like contracted through the military and I used to run child development centers or like summer camps Aww. on these different military bases. And it was a lot of fun. And I got in Japan first time, like I said, first time on an airplane was going to Japan. Mind blowing experience to be in an airplane <laughs> for like 13 hours. And I was like, dude, I've, I've literally every trip that I've taken has always been in a car. So mm-hmm. being in a car, like going 13 hours we get to another state. But I was like, yo, I'm in a whole nother country. Like yeah. I've crossed the ocean, yeah. you know? <laughs> I got to see Alaska. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so getting there and realizing like, oh my gosh, this place is different. And I loved it. I love the tradition. I love the culture. I love the food. And I was like, man, I want more of this. And so like, that's mm-hmm. where I got bit. And, and ever since then, I started like traveling 
Oh, I love that. I got excited because that was that was like one of the places that gave me the travel the travel bug as well. I love it. Yeah, I love and that it. was not on my bucket list. I was like, I don't want to go real? to Japan. Yeah, yeah, so weird. I was you like, I don't want to go to Japan. Went there, loved it. You know, you know what was crazy for me it was like, I mean, I remember just like praying because uh, the the program that you that, that I was in. Like you can put your first choice, but you, you didn't know if you was gonna get it or not, right? Mm. And I met my friend, one of my my best friends now. Uh, the day I met her was the day she did the program a year before, and so I was like, "Wait, you're going where? You're going to Japan?" I was like, "Wait, like that concept, uh, literally 15, 16 years ago was like, nah, this this is almost unheard of. Like only military people go over there." But I was like, "Yo, you're a black woman." Like going to Japan right now, college student. I was like, "What is this experience? Tell me more." <laughs> and so I, ever since that day, I was like, a year later, I was like praying. I was like, "I want to go to Japan. I want to go to Japan." Aww. And I just remember like how crazy it is for a person like myself uh, to go to Japan because nobody in my family really did anything international uh, mm-hmm. unless they were in the military, and I mm-hmm. had many family members in the military, so. Mm-hmm. Were the, were, were your family experience. like worried about you? Uh yeah. Mm-hmm. At, uh, at some points, like they, like when I when I told them I was doing it, it was like Japan for what? <laughs> you know what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but once, but once I like, I mean, there was no permission because yeah. uh, I was a grown adult at mm-hmm. that time. I felt like I was grown uh, <laughs> as a college student. <laughs> but um, but it was so crazy to see the response from the people within my community um, and like hearing people's stories, like my dad and them, they, they got very excited and very proud of me to be going to Japan mm-hmm. uh, or international. You know, I never thought about this. Like this is stuff I haven't even thought about in years. Um, and I, I just remember like uh, my dad's neighbor um, across the street, she, she was an older woman and she was like, yo, I've never left like, like the Orlando area, Mm. uh, because I'm from Orlando, Florida. But she was like, I've never left the Orlando area. And she was like 60, 70 years old. And I was like, what? And so that like blew my mind to be able to like adventure even further than out of the state or out of the city and going to a whole nother country uh, was just like mind blowing. I think my family was like super proud of that. And then when they found out I was doing stuff for the government, it was it was over there like boosting that up like oh Jeff is running a whole military but he's like no no I'm not Sergeant Jeff that's it that's it <laughs> but it, it was beautiful man it was beautiful to see how hype they were uh, for yeah. me Aww. have you been back since yeah I've been back uh, I think it was it was one of one of my last countries. I went to before uh, it was back in 2019. So mm. one of the last countries I went to before the pandemic. Oh, nice. amazing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's great. You got yeah. to go. Yeah. And if I remember correctly, you, uh, you said you were running like childcare centers and then you went on to become a, was it a high school music teacher? Yeah. I taught high school yeah. music for nine years, choir, high school choir. Wow. So I was Mr. Jenkins. <laughs> That's all the kids knew me by. <laughs> the best part of their day, I'm sure. Yeah. Oh well, yeah, best and worst at times. <laughs> Just pushing on the them season up. Yeah. Anything close to the concert, like it was, it was go time. So we was yeah. focused. So, but yeah, I, I people, my students tell me that all the time, and they're like my biggest fans on social media right now. Uh-huh. Anyway, like it's so crazy. Like you'll see them. Uh, like comment on something I might have been featured in and they'll be like oh my god that's my teacher that's my teacher right <laughs> there. <laughs> I'm sure you've had like different experiences so you've shown the kids like there's hard times and there's these fun times on travels right For sure. it's not always what everybody sees on Instagram they see like the good stuff um, can you tell us a little bit about your experiences with like um, just hard and tough times that you've had? Yeah, um, I would even say some of the hard times is right now. Um, yeah. Man, my back is acting up. Like, mm. like it's crazy. I've been me going too. to the gym, been doing a lot of stuff. Mm. And, like, my back spasmed on me this weekend. And, like, I'm, I have a trip 
That is like a, a not a once in a lifetime, but one of a trip that I've always wanted to go on bucket list. And I was like, yo, I'm not going to get to Hawaii and not be able to like walk around because oh, my back man. is yeah. so stiff and stuff. So the the gruelingness of that, but then also some of the traveling that is done, uh, people stealing stuff uh, mm. from you in, in Europe, um, mm. being lonely um, in Europe yeah. at times. Europe definitely can be lonely. It's just it's right. just what it is. Beach, beach. When you go to like beach cities or beach destinations, it ain't that bad. Like yeah. you be like, eh, eh, it is what it is. I'm at the <laughs> ocean. We're good. <laughs> but when it's when it's cold and there's nothing but city bricks and cement yeah. rock, he be over there like, hmm, yeah. <laughs> Wish there was somebody here to say hi to me. But no, I, I think. There definitely has definitely been like lonely moments um, with travel, uh, me being plus size, um, like experiencing, like uh, not being able to get on an excursion because of like mm -hmm. my size or the, the weight limit. Um, and just like even like getting up to the line and, and being like, ooh, and you find out and like now you feel isolated. Now you mm -hmm. feel embarrassed in some ways. Um, and, and that, that to me like sucks as well. And mm. so that's even one thing about Chubby Diaries that I, I love to, to continue to like mention and try to, I rather go through the embarrassment or I rather figure out this before you even get there. So yeah. you don't have mm -hmm. to go through the same experience and people countlessly tell me that in my DMs or mm -hmm. they message mm -hmm. me that. And it's just beautiful to hear yeah. that they don't have to go through it either. Mm hmm well, let's hope that a lot of these excursions, like, you know, try and figure out a way to make mm -hmm. it more inclusive to everybody. Yeah, um, for sure. Yeah. So do you do solo travel and group travel? You have like uh, that whole spectrum? Uh, yeah, I do solo travel. Um, I travel with my wife mm -hmm. uh, at times. Um, and then now, like, this is like one of the first trips. Is it? Yeah. This is one of the first trips I've ever taken, like plane ride, everything is like with a group of friends. Like, I don't think I've ever done that before. And, uh, but we've traveled a lot together, um, but it was never like on a plane or something like that. And so I'm excited about that. But yeah, I also used to do group trips uh, where I would take people and they, I would host trips uh, to oh, different nice. destinations. And we had just got back from Thailand. We went to Bali sold out both of those trips and so in the wow. pandemic hit and then boom 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 oh, we, yeah. we were stuck yeah. so i'm ready to pick those back up at the end of the year yeah. going into the beginning of next year so there you go hey leah yeah. let's go let's go come on come on <laughs> i'm down i'm so antsy <laughs> i'm down i know <laughs> Got i like truly plans. truly haven't traveled during this time but that's a whole really? other punk yeah we went to Mexico together, Trizzy and I, um, right. for a big event that mm -hmm. otherwise, you know, it was a life event. So it was like now or never. But other than that, I'm just exploring Southern California, which is like the longest I've stayed home. But but I focus on right. coffee and travel and co like good coffee mm -hmm. to fuel your travels. So mm -hmm. piv pivoting a little bit as well. <laughs> well, I can tell you my favorite coffee is in Italy. Like, Ooh. No lie. Yeah. No lie. They they put me on. I, I didn't mm. espresso was never a thing of mine. And I was like, man, how y'all stay up so late? Because <laughs> in Italy, a lot of places they don't eat until like eight, nine o'clock, like dinner. And I'm like, what? wait, time out for what? Like exactly. Yeah. yeah. And I was yeah. like, how do y'all stay up? And then I was like, well, does the, the day start later? Nah, they just don't <laughs> sleep. They, <laughs> <laughs> they just don't sleep nah. as much. <laughs> but they got coffee so they be on yep. it and coffee is coming to my life especially yep. on trips so <laughs> um that's honestly like in Argentina too they don't eat dinner till like 9 10 p.m and then they like pre-game at like 11 p.m and they mm -hmm. go out to the club at like 1 2 a.m <laughs> I'm in my REM <laughs> sleep by the time they're pre <laughs> pre-partying <laughs> right Oh man. I'm, I like I like to get to bed early, you know. Yep. Only when I'm out though. Sometimes when I'm out. You know what? When I'm with my wife, we I don't actually explore as much. We for some mm. reason be like, you know what, babe, let's just like call it a day. Let's go home. Or like go Aww. to the 
No, it ain't. A, it ain't. I don't know what that is. You just be tired and old. <laughs> I'm tired and old. <laughs> you know those moments you be like, man, I'm really tired. She just yeah. feeds on that and just be yeah. like, I'm tired too. Let's just go back. Yeah. Instead of like being with other people that might yeah. be like energetic, ready to go. You'd be like, oh, I guess I could stay out a little bit longer. So it's right. different. Me and her just be like, nah, we good. We're going in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I could travel with your wife. That's like me sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> She's <laughs> She's like, all right, I'm good. I was like, go ahead, Jeff. Go ahead, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we're going to jump into our T2A, Q2A, which is Ticket to Anywhere Quick to Answer segment, which is kind of like rapid fire. Mm-hmm. I love it. So we have, was it one, two, three, four questions for you. And the first right. one is, why do you travel? I travel to experience uh, new things. Now I'm gonna be honest. Like it's, it's more so for the experience of it. I love experiences, and I feel like experiences teach you and and help you learn new things. Yes, definitely. It humbled me for sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Love that. Mm-hmm. All right. Do you have any rituals or routines when you get to a new city or country? Like first things you do when you get there. I want to check in. That's normally <laughs> my first thing. <laughs> Every single time, like, I, I just need to get my bearings together. Yeah. And honestly, I don't usually do much until it's time to, like, check in. Like, I, I, I just need to get myself together. That's how I normally do any um, any international. But, yeah, mm-hmm. I need I need to get in, mm-hmm. check, uh, map out a couple of more things, uh, get a smell of, like, what's happening. And usually I'm hungry at that time, too. So yeah. it's time to eat, too. So Hell, yeah. Um, what items do you absolutely need with you on your trips? Uh, absolutely my iPhone, <laughs> like more than anything, uh, uh, earphones, uh, or uh, AirPods, um, and my book bag. Your book bag. Okay. Or, right. or backpack, whatever y'all like to call we it. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> we we Bro, got back you. in the day. Back in the day, I had to carry books, and so we called it. The book. <laughs> Gosh, you acted like you're a generation <laughs> so, older than yeah. us. I know. Bro, I don't know how. <laughs> no, but I can tell you, like my students back in the day, them jokers. Every time I called it a book bag, they were like, "Why are you calling it a book bag?" <laughs> I was like, "Well, that's because I had books in my backpack." <laughs> like. <laughs> And that's why we call it the book bag. That's where your books go. Oh, all right. And the last question, wrapping up this time with you. What is your next trip? What do you have going on next? What's in the works? Well, well I kind of just told y'all. That. I know. Yeah. <laughs> going back to Hawaii. After going that. Hawaii, yeah. Um, I think I have like Cartagena. Uh, Ooh. That'll be fun. Uh, I'm going to Maine, um, Florida, back to Cartagena after that. Um, so oh my yeah, gosh. I, I mean, I'm starting. I'm starting to like, like fill up some stuff now, and um, I'm like really looking forward to, uh, like what's to come. And like, I really do feel like travel is definitely pick, picking up. I get vaccinated, mm-hmm. uh, sec- my second dose on uh, hopefully next week. Oh yeah, your first one they like couldn't. What was it? They couldn't find the vein or your story. The guy it's put a muscle, put, right? Couldn't put on the band aid. <laughs> he couldn't put the band aid on. Yes, yes. It's like what happened? I was like, bro, bro did so great when it came down the back. He was like, uh, uh, and was out. I was like, bro, you did it. Like I almost felt like he didn't do it. I was like, yo, I was like, you put, you put, you put a needle in me. And he was like, yeah. Well, that's because I've been working out to y'all. So the muscles, mm, they've been just, like, they've been like ooh, popping ooh, out, ooh. you know. Uh, <laughs> But my dude could not put that Band-Aid on. He was, like, he was over there like, <laughs> I felt like he got frustrated with the Band-Aid and just like started just like slapping it off. He was like, oh, we're just gonna, we're just gonna leave it. And I'm telling you, no lie, like that Band-Aid looks so funky. I was like, okay. <laughs> that's, how, that's how we're gonna do it. All right, all right. that's how we're gonna do it. So. Oh, yeah. I'm glad you got, I'm glad you got some, mm-hmm. some work and some trips coming up for you. That's awesome. And to hear that you're going back to Cartagena twice. I'm super jealous. I love uh, Colombia. Well, you, you can definitely, I'm thinking about, uh, well, one, the first trip is a scouting trip. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm planning to start doing masterminds uh, with different Ooh. content creators. 
-hmm. So I'm, I'm planning to use that as our base um, and start bringing people out there uh, in small groups. So uh, look out for that as Devin to come in. and Because I, I really do, I feel like, one, that we can learn from each other as content mm -hmm. creators. And so, and also people need that like retreat style um, and like being able to mastermind and like grow with each other and grow from each other is something that I think is dope. Yes. That's awesome. Uh, I've been waiting for <laughs> Jeff to come onto the pod. Yeah, I'm glad we finally fit it in and made it work. So for sure. I'm, we'll I'm keep so in touch. Glad. Well, y'all we'll hop on your, your itineraries. You the best, Jeff. Come on, come on, come on. Let's make oh, it Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're there. <laughs> All right. Yeah, follow me, Chubby Diaries underscore underscore on Instagram. There you go. There you go. Chubby Diaries everywhere. Website, Instagram, right? TikTok. TikTok. YouTube. Yeah. I don't All right. Do I'm <laughs> trying to get better at YouTube. Actually, that's TikTok. what I did literally before I got on here. I just sent over YouTube videos to for my editor to there edit go. her videos there you for go. YouTube. So we're Sweet. trying to get that YouTube together. There we All go. All right. <laughs> Be on the lookout. Awesome. <laughs> Thank we'll you talk again. to you Take soon, care. Jeff. Be Thank safe. You. No Bye. You can find Jeff at chubbydiaries.com or follow Chubby Diaries on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. Be sure to follow Ticket to Anywhere podcast on your favorite podcast platform and subscribe to us on YouTube. Ticket to Anywhere podcast is active on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. So connect with us on social media. See you soon. Bye.